Axel's Garage. We are in the shop and we are in the process of this $40 holster challenge video that we've been doing. I unbox a holster, I show it to you, I give you my opinion on what I think, and then I wear it every day for 60 days, sometimes even longer. Sometimes I go back to the previous one and then go back to the one I'm testing, and it could sometimes take three, four, five, even six months to get a good review in, and then after wearing it for so long, during my normal life, I work a night job, I work a day job in a, in a close-quartered food truck. I do a lot of work on cars and automotive stuff where I'm, I'm under a car or over in a hood, and I wear it everywhere, every time, go to the range with it, and really test it out. I am not a slim, slender person. I carry an extra 40 pounds. For fat guys, you know holsters can be a challenge. So today, we are going a little bit past our $40 benchmark and our $40 holster challenge, and we're going to transition into, we've done three. So we've done We The People. Uh, right in around 40 bucks by the time you get it home if a little bit more if you want a fancy one if you want a plain one We've done we the people we've done an unboxing. We've done a, a review. I've worn it I've done everything with it that you could do and I gave you my opinion on it And that's in a previous video linked in the description below From we the people we went to concealment express Conceal so we the people back up we the people being the first one takes the number one spot initially then we did concealment express Right, nice looking holster, wore it, loved it. It surpassed the We The People for several reasons. The reasons why are in those previous videos, linked in the description below. And this moved into the number one spot. And then a viewer recommended Amberide. Amberide, Texas, Lone Star, Lone Star, Lifetime Warranty, Texas, Tough, all this Texas, big Texas mumbo jumbo. I loved it. I love Texas. I love visiting Texas. Everybody's got a lot of Texas pride. However, this Texas holster did move into the number one spot by a, by a long shot. Moved into the number one spot. However, I find out the Texas holster is made in China. Offshore made in China. Almost half the price of these others. These are $40 to $45 holsters for the $40 holster challenge. This one is a $20. $27 holster, depending on what kind of promo deal you can get when you order it. Had I ordered this one direct, it wasn't available on the Amazons or anything like that. Ordered it direct from Amberide. Paid for this with my money. Paid for this with my money. Paid for this with my money. So these are not any kind of sponsored reviews whatsoever. This one absolutely moved into the number one spot. However, made in China. Then we go on to find out that not only are they made in China, but they are stealers of other people's designs. And they stole from what they're telling me, and I'll tell you who, Tolster. So the title of today's video is about Tolster. Well, Tolster claims that this Chinese offshore company stole their designs and they're taking legal action against them. Tulsa, an Oklahoma-based company, maybe that's why they're called Tulsa, Tolster, because they're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I don't know, maybe. Anyway. They're a U.S. company. Their holsters are made in the U.S. And they claim that Amberide stole their designs. So, what do we have? Well, we got Tolster. Tolster. And more Tolster holsters. These are the, they're basic. Inside the waistband profile, they call them. Profile series. Nothing fancy here. Now, we don't want anything fancy. I get excited when I open something new. Right? Package. Comes in bubble wrap. In a soft bubble mailer, the holsters in bubble wrap, no big stickers and all that other crap with it to drive the price up. And it's a, a simple Kydex inside the waistband holster, just like we're looking for, right? We're not, we don't want anything fancy. We want a functional holster. Good clip, good firearm retention, comfortable. Those are what we're looking for, right? We want to retain the gun. We want to be able to wear it on our, on our belt inside the waistband. We want it to be comfortable. We don't want it to pinch us. And we want it to do its job and hold up. And, and most of the 2A supporters want it to be made in the United States. And this is one of them. What do we have? A nice Cardex holster with all smooth edges. There is... Wow. This is the first time I've taken it out of the bubble wrap. There is not one sharp edge 
anywhere. Screws. Phillips head screws. No special fasteners, no Allen. Smooth. They're not going to grab you. They're not going to bite you. We got one with a big, uh, for your retention screw, with a big, thick rubber bushing. And then your clip screws with nice rubber bushings. The clip looks decent. It's got a, uh, a 1.5. It says right on there, 1.5 inches for the belt. So it'll go up to a, an inch and a half belt. It looks like it's got the right cant on it already. I like a 15 degree or so cant. It looks like it's right there. We'll play with that can and see how it moves in a second. But right out of the box, looks pretty good. So let's grab a Phillips head. And let's see if we can move this clip. All right. And see how much the clip moves. Oh, yeah. We got a lot of nice movement in this clip. I like it. So I am going to take it and I am going to put it into about a 15 to 20 degree cant because that's where i like it and i'll do that by comparing it to my other holsters because i know where they are just by eye and i'm looking good right here so i'm gonna give it a little tightening remember this there's, there's some rubber bushing there so you don't have to go crazy tightening not moving at all it's tight. The screws got plenty of room where they're not poking all the way through. Sometimes they put screws that are too long in a lot of holsters. And then when you get it as tight as you need it, they're, they're um, poking through on the other side. These screws are short enough not to poke through, but yet long enough to do the job, which is what you want. Now we got our retention one that also has a Phillips head. However, we got to get something to play with it first. So this toaster holster is for a Glock, nine, uh, Glock 19. So I'm going to take my everyday carry Glock 19 out, safe, clear, and empty. A lot of people comment, why do you do that? It's a YouTube thing. Handling firearms in a safe manner or some shit like that is one of the requirements of YouTube monetization with firearms. We're going to take our Glock 19, and it clicked in nice, and that's with the retention set as it is, and I don't think I need to even adjust that. I'm going to give it my, my unrealistic shake test. Those of you that have been watching my videos know that I give these holsters a very unrealistic shake test. I'm moving everything out of the way because I don't want to break anything. But I do give it, give them an unrealistic shake test. So I got a, a triple matted metal workbench here. And I got the bubble envelope on it. And then I take it, I grab it by the clip, right? And I give it a vigorous shake up and down. And I'm like, oh, what do you do that for? You're not going to be doing that when you're wearing it. No, you're not. It's just an example of one holster to the next, how the retention is. Now, I didn't even tighten this retention screw. This is the way it was out of the box. It felt okay pulling it out. All right, now let's weight it. Let's take a loaded Glock 19 15 mag round, uh, 15 round mag, can't speak today, and put that in, nothing in the chamber. All I did was pop the magazine in just to give it a little weight. All right, and the same thing, I'm gonna shake it, and it come, came out, but I had to shake it pretty hard. So we're gonna do it again. There's little shakes, ain't going anywhere. By really big shakes, it starts to come out. That's that's decent retention. All right, that's just as good as any of the other good holsters that we've tried. Back in on the holster, our other thing was any play, none. Now, if you watch my other videos, we'll link them all down below. We did have some holsters that had a little play in them when you shook them like this. A lot of times that play went away when you wore them. It was just something that I wanted to note. So, so far, so good. No sharp edges. Decent clip, decent retention. Clip is nice and heavy. What I am noticing on this Tulsa holster, different from the Amberide. Oh no, it's not different from the, oh, a little different from the Amberide, is in the back here. So let me, let me show you. Up here, up top, this has got a little lip on it, where this one doesn't have a little lip on it right here. So there, there, are, there, there are some subtle differences in the two holsters. On this side, all right, they're almost identical on this side. This one's got a lip over here where it doesn't have a lip on this one. 
the trigger mechanism around there is about the same and down on the front they're, they're close they're not exact but they're close the only way to know is to wear it to tell you the truth it seems seems nice i got good coverage on the trigger you can see right there there's i mean you can't get anything in there it's it's covering the trigger on both sides it's clear of the magazine release and it's coming up the whole back that's against your body is coming up all the way very similar to right the amberoid there i am with the amberoid and this is supposed to be the copy same thing on the on the trigger guard and the amberoid might go up a little bit higher you can see the, the holster is just a little bit higher than the back of the slide let's go back to the toaster right and the toaster is about flush with the top of the slide so i don't know and then we'll go to the concealment express right concealment express i really liked but it pinched me and look at the difference there the difference is that's where i was getting pinched it was a positional pinch it depended on how i had my my fat guy body but this one nice and tight all right unless i'm going to get pinched right here you see this little this little kick out right here right in the in the amberoid that little click kick out well i guess it is about the same yeah i guess it is about the same so the only the only difference is on top the only difference is on top you can see how on the toaster it's got this little guy here where this one it's kind of flatter across the top i don't know what the reason for that is back to the toaster the amberoid did not fit the 19 and the 26 yeah it's a 19 holster it's an unrealistic expectation just like shaking it on my bench when i shake it on my bench however some of them do fit others this one fits it fits it locks in retention is the same it's at the same spot up top so if you're a toaster holster owner and you have a 26 it will fit oh what happened here oh it's a little tight going in look at that so when i went to put it in all the way it actually grabbed the slide right it grabbed the slide enough to push it back when i did that the last time oh yeah you can see right here it's a little out of battery but if you put your thumb on the back of the slide when you holster it does go in nice all the way so now toaster for the glock 19 uh, for the Glock 26. So the Tolster for the Glock 26, right, is just a shorter, oh, I'm up here, sorry, is just a shorter version. So if I hold the clips in the same spot, right, hold the top in the same spot, it's just a little shorter, which is what it should be for a Glock 26, right? And yes, it does go in a lot easier. I don't have to worry about it pushing a slide there's a difference in dimension over here somewhere between a 19 and a 26 people don't realize there's a difference but there is a slight slight difference in dimension that's why some holsters are interchangeable just because the tolerances are a little sloppy the amberide it doesn't even go in at all this one this now got the 19 with the 26 19 holster 26 firearm and it does grab the slide a little bit and try to pull push this i could see the slide moving a little bit however if you put it in with your thumb on the back of the slide holding it, it goes in. All right, so there is a subtle difference. You can get away with using both if you had to. The only drawback to having one for both is the benefit is just, you know, a shorter firearm and you have still have the same length in your pants. That doesn't sound right. Shorter and the holster is the same length, so you're not making it, you're not making any more room for yourself. Where if you had the, the right one, you know it's even the concealment express 26 goes right in it the we the people 26 goes right in it with no problem and then here on the amberoid the 26 does not go in it you could force it and again does the same exact things every other holster that we've tested you can slide a 26 in no issue whatsoever then amberoid you can get that 26 in but it does push the, the slide back Unless you got your thumb on the back of the slide and then toaster, the people that are saying, hey, they're copying our design, 
Same exact thing. So maybe there is something there to that copy in our design shit. So here's our Tulsters, 1926. And we also got one for the shield because somehow along the line of doing these reviews, it was always with a 19 and a 26. Primarily the 19, that was the, the firearm that we were using to do these reviews. However, the Amber Ride was such a successful review when we, when we were initially doing it that we tried it on the, the shield just to see what it would do. So we have a, a Smith & Wesson shield here and we have the shield tolster holster. And oh wow, that's a nice click in there, huh? Retention, still good. We'll put a loaded, loaded mag in there and it'll come out with the loaded mag. Nothing crazy, just like all the other ones that have good retention. Again, without the loaded bag, it's fine. Trigger guard is covered. Same thing, side of your body, all right? So, what do we do from here? Well, it's a 60 day review time. So, we're gonna take this Glock 19 and the Tulster holster, and we are gonna go 60 days. Glock 19, Tulsa holster, wearing it to work, wearing it all day, wearing it around the house, wearing it in the shop, in the garage, down here, working on cars at the range. No matter what we do, we will have this Tulsa holster on our body with the Glock 19, and we'll go 60 days, and we'll get back to you now. There is a chance that we could have an issue or an epiphany. So issue or epiphany that would prevent us from going the full 60 days. It's issue would prevent us. Epiphany is after 60 days is holy shit, that's really good. At that point, what I normally do is I'll go back to the other ones. I'll wear the other ones for a week or two each. And then I might take the toaster and go to the 26 with the toaster and try that for a little while. Then go back to the other ones and see what I what I recollect. And then maybe go to the shield with the toaster and then give you a final review. But we do wear the crap out of these holsters before we get back to you with a final review. Minimum of 60 days. That starts today. I didn't address price. Yeah, see, there's always something I forget. This was a $40 holster challenge. So we went, we the people, and Consumer Express, right around 40 bucks, 45 depending on the finish and stuff like that. If you could get free shipping, buy it on Amazon with Prime, whatever it might be, 40 bucks. your results may vary. Then we went to Amberide, which we thought was an American company. Turns out it's a Chinese company, and they were at 20 to $25.00 depending on what kind of promo code you can get, or if you buy two, you can get a really good deal on them. And then we have the Tolster Holsters. The Glock 19 Tolster Holster is on Tolster's website. That's a tongue twister. Is on Tolster's website for $64.99, 65 bucks, free shipping. When you click on their website the first time, you can sign up and get a promo code for 15, 10, 15. Sometimes they run a 20% off deal. They do have deals on their website currently, and I'm sure from time to time they have sales where you can get this maybe in the $50 range, which would be nice. This holster being $65.99. The Amberide being the holster that we've tested and gotten overall outstanding, outstanding results on. If this guy is stealing the designs from this guy, the Chinese Offshore Thieves, and an American-made holster by real Americans in the United States, then I'm willing to pay the couple extra shekels for this one if it turns out to be good. And only 60 days is going to, we're going to need to find that out. So jury's not out yet. They seem like a very nice and reputable company. And we're going to let you know our honest review, no bullshit, in 60 days. As always, thanks for watching and check out the holster playlist in the description below. See you on the next video.